we had the horrible uh, murder of George Floyd in 2020 that sparked the world into racial consciousness. Now, my first experience with that was in 1992 with uh, Rodney King. But I got to see it this time as an adult. And um, I was nervous because I said, people are moving so fast that I anticipate there's going to be a regression, that people are going to quickly stall out. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and that's what brought me to you. I believe that empathy, specifically three particular po points, the ability to feel what other people feel, to be moved to do something about those feelings, and be able to respond appropriately um, are necessary in order to create an inclusive world. Please describe the term radical empathy for those who may not be familiar. Yeah, so my colleague and thought partner, Dr. Ian Roberts, was the first person who used that term with me, and I wrote the foreword for his book by the same name. And when I think of a radical person, I think of somebody who advocates, um, they're not just an ally, right? They're not just in word saying they believe something, but they're also doing things. But for the purpose of reform, for the purpose of change, um, for a larger goal. So if we think about a radical in that term as a noun, and then we transition that into when you're talking about the adjective radical, which really means an obscene level of something, what would it look like if we took those aspects of empathy, feeling what other people feel, being moved to act on those feelings, responding appropriately. And if we did that with the sole purpose of being advocates to create social reform, and that we were going to do that at, to, to such a degree that people would think it's obscene. <laughs> and that is uh, how I think about radical empathy. And in short, I just say it's a relentless focus on being empathetic.